the wolf. Its keynotes are guardianship, ritual, family, loyalty, and spirit. Its cycles of power are year-round, full moons, and twilight. Wolves are probably the most misunderstood of all the wild animals. Tales of terror and their cold-bloodedness abound. Although many stories tell otherwise, there has never been any confirmed attack and killing of a human by a healthy wolf. In spite of the negative press, wolves are almost the exact opposite of how they are portrayed. They are friendly, social, and highly intelligent. Their sense of family is strong and loyal, and they live by carefully defined rules and rituals. Wolves are the epitome of the wild spirit. Their positive characteristics are so numerous, it is no wonder that Native Americans and others practically deified them. Many believe that the true test of America's sincerity about protecting the environment will revolve around whether or not the wolf remains protected and is allowed to be reintroduced into areas of the country where it has herefore been eliminated. The wolf is the true spirit of the free and unspoiled wilderness. There are several kinds of wolves in North America. The red wolf is the smallest and it may even be extinct in the wild, although there are efforts to, to reintroduce it. Its territory was in the Southern United States. The Mexican wolf is a subspecies of the more common gray wolf. It is found in the Southwest United States and Mexico. It was hunted almost to extinction and is now part of a recovery and captive breeding plan. The Arctic wolf is probably the purest breed, living in an isolated area around the Arctic Circle has enabled its survival far from humans. The gray or timber wolf is the most common. Only in Alaska, Canada, and the region around the Great Lakes area it is found today. Now that's changing. We have wolves in Oregon, California, and potentially Colorado. They cross through Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho as well. <clears throat> May angels be with them <laughs> in their travels. The gray wolf is not always gray. It may be black, gray, brown, white, or various combinations. Probably the biggest misconception of wolves is about their size. They are not nearly as large as most people imagine. Their thick fur gives an appearance of greater size, but they are usually no taller than a good-sized German shepherd. Wolves are very ritualistic in as many ways as humans. They live by carefully defined rules. There are specific territories that are sacred to the wolves. Their social behavior is based upon a hierarchical structure. Each has its place and function within the hierarchy pack. There is an alpha male and an alpha female. Wolves do not fight unnecessarily. In fact, they will often go out of their way to avoid it. Though they are extremely strong and powerful, disagreements rarely end in serious fights. Often a glance, a posture, a growl is all that is necessary to determine dominance. They don't have to demonstrate it, but they are capable if it comes down to it. This is part of what 
wolf medicine teaches. The wolf teaches you to know who you are and to develop strength, confidence, and surety in that so that you do not have to demonstrate and prove yourself to all. Wolves have a complex communication system using body language, the movement of the head and erect tail, direct eye contact, all have great meaning. The postures are often subtle, but each wolf learns from the time they are pups how to read bodily behavior and respond. The facial expressions of the wolf are varied and useful in conveying the mood to other members of the pack. It is most important visual center of communication. The wolf also uses its tail position to effectively communicate as well. Usually those with wolf totems are very expressive with hands, <laughs> posture, face, or in some other manner. If you have difficulty conveying your moods and ideas to others, meditate and study the wolf. It will teach you how to empower your verbal communications with appropriate body language. Wolves also have a complex system of vocal communications. They howl, whimper, whine, growl, and even bark. Even the howls for which they are famous have a variety of meanings. The howls may serve as a signal to call others of the pack or to locate the other members. They may be a social expression. They are used to greet one another and to define certain territories. They even howl just for the joy of it. Every member of the pack knows its position in relationship to everyone else within the pack. The ritualistic behaviors that establish the wolf ranks are a part of its magic. Wolf packs are not entirely autocratic under the supreme rule of the alpha member. Neither are they dem democratic. There are times when both occur and it is this flexibility which adds to the success of the wolf government. Wolf can teach the lesson of proper governship. A balance between authority and democracy Wolf can teach you how to use ritual to establish order and harmony within your own life. Wolf helps us to understand that true freedom requires great discipline. The alpha, the alpha male and female often mate for life. Breeding season is usually in late winter with the female giving birth about two months later. All members of the pack show great care and affection toward the playful pups. They are extremely tolerant. If the mother or father is unable to care for them, then another member will adopt the young. Some wolves will even serve as babysitters. Adult wolves are friendly and amiable toward pups. And wolf medicine teaches respect and honor for family and for children. Wolves become sexually mature at about the age of 22 to 24 months. For those who have wolf come to them, look for its energies and influence in your life to take the same possible pattern. Wolves are, of course, predators. Their prey consists most often of the sick, the young, and the old. Deer 
is their most common prey animal. Wolves will not waste much time on a healthy adult moose that stands its ground. Wolves travel great distances in their hunting. They have a stamina and strength that enables them to travel far and for extended periods. They have been clocked at 24 to 28 miles per hour. That's close to the dragonfly. Dragonfly reaches 35 miles per hour. Damn. Although the wolf can't maintain that speed for any great length of time, it does seem able to trot indefinitely at about five miles per hour. In winter, these wolves will use frozen lakes and rivers as travel routes and can travel 15 to 25 kilometers in a single night. Wolves usually consume all that they capture, gorging themselves. For those with wolf totems, this can indicate a need to make use of all that is available to you. Sometimes wolves show up as a totem to remind us not to waste as much and remind us to keep our spirits alive. The wolf has an extreme intelligence. It goes out of its way to avoid trouble or danger. Some believe that wolves even use ravens as aerial spotters for possible food sources. The raven has a connection to the moose in Eskimo lore. And since moose can be a prey of wolves, raven is linked to them as well. Ravens will often follow wolves. They will fly ahead, land in a tree, and wait for the wolves to pass, and then fly on again. Wolf expert David Mack reported a playful behavioral relationship sometimes displayed between wolves and ravens. So, ravens should also be studied by those with wolf totems. Wolves have extremely keen senses, particularly that of smell. It is said that 100 times greater than that of humans. Damn. The sense of smell endows it with great discrimination, and the sense of smell has often been associated with spiritual idealism in metaphysical circles. The wolf also has an excellent hearing sensitivity. Its hunting depends strongly upon its sense of smell and hearing. This would be a reminder to those with this totem to listen to their own inner thoughts and words. The intuition will be strong. This idea is even further emphasized by the thick coat of the fur of the wolf. Fur and hair have long been symbols of psychic abilities. The wolf has both an inner coat and an outer giving it the ability to reflect the archetypal forces associated with psychic insight. The wolf has a capacity for making quick and firm emotional attachments, learning to trust your own insight, insights and to secure your attachments accordingly is part of what wolf medicine teaches. The wolf can help you hear your inner and outer guard. It will guard you from inappropriate action. So basically, if you carry wolf medicine, listen to your instincts, that first initial gut feeling, do not ignore it. <laughs> That's my lesson on a day to day basis. <sighs> the wolf will guard you as it teaches you sometimes strongly and sometimes gently, but always with love. Find a new path, take a new journey, take control of your life. You are the governor of your life. You create it and direct it. Do so with harmony and discipline, and then you will know the true spirit of freedom. 
ahab 